What, what the new Republican fascism tells us about, you know, what's going on. Um, this is, uh, Progress Report is a, a, a Substack newsletter. And the, 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 the good folks at Progress Report compiled a list of all the legislation that has come out of Florida that, that basically suggests that, uh, you know, Ron DeSantis and the Florida Republicans have turned that state into a fascist haven. And I'm just going to go through some of these. This is incredible. Of course, there's SB 300, the cowardly six-week abortion ban. There's SB 202, the Defund Public Schools Act. This gives uh, any, anybody, everybody in the state $7,400 that they can use as a voucher to pay for private school. Now, private schools typically cost way more than $7,400. So poor people won't be able to use these. They'll have to put their, their kids in public schools. Many middle class or lower middle class people will not be able to afford using these. They'll, their kids will be in public schools. But upper middle class and really rich people, they'll do just great. That's a $7,400 tax break to them or, or you know, subsidy and uh, tax free for that matter. Uh, State Representative Randy Fine, who bragged, you know, uh, is one of the guys who p uh, proposed this legislation. He said he would, quote, be one of the millionaires who would get a scholarship under this thing. <laughs> Then there's SB 102, the Landlord Protection Act. Floridians are dealing with one of the most out of control housing markets in the country. Their solution, make it worse. 59% of Orange County residents voted in 2022 to enact a rent control ordinance. And so what did they do? They passed a law saying, no, you can't do that. Local communities, you can't have rent control. HB 543, the Get More People Murdered Act. It allows Floridians to uh, carry a concealed gun without first going through the uh, training that was required under previous for, uh, Florida law. DeSantis says this is going to help with personal freedom. Uh, when Arizona repealed its concealed carry, carry permit in 2010, there was an 11% increase in gun injuries and deaths. Nationwide, states that have passed permitless carry have seen a 22% increase in gun homicides over a three-year period. Then there's SB 494, the predatory housing scam, the guts security deposit protections. I went through this list of this, this just absolutely amazing list of legislation that has been passed in Florida that really tells us, and you know, it tells all of us, I think, you know, how, how essentially fascist that state has become. Uh, to start out, there's the, uh, the six-week abortion ban. I mentioned that. There's also the Defund Public Schools Act that gives $7,400 to anybody wealthy enough to be able to spend, you know, $10,000, $20,000 to send their kid to a private school. There's the Landlord Protection Act. This is uh, Senate Bill 102. Um, again, Florida has one of the most out of control housing markets in the entire country. And the Florida legislature has a solution to solve this problem. Um, <laughs> I say that sarcastically. Uh, back in 2022, 59% of the residents of Orange County, one of the counties that's experiencing this, you know, housing crisis, voted to enact a rent stabilization ordinance stabilizing rent prices. In other words, uh, you can only raise rents a certain percentage each year, that kind of thing. And uh, so the F Florida Republicans got to work and they passed SB 102, the Landlord Protection Act, that said, no, landlords can raise prices, they can raise rent as much as they want, whenever they want. Oh, and also, there's a big giveaway to developers. You know, wouldn't it be nice if they built some new housing? Well, you'd think they would do it anyway, since there's so much demand for housing, but hey, let's give them some money because they donate to our campaigns. Um, so there's that. Then there's HB3, the Get More People Murdered Act. Um, I, I mentioned this just before the break also, states that pass permitless carry laws saw a 22 percent increase in homicide in the first three years after passage well florida just did that and uh, now you can carry a gun without having to go through the mandatory training and uh desanta says this is uh, defending freedom right only if you believe that shooting politicians which is the new republican meme that the founders wanted you to have guns so you could shoot politicians only if you believe that shooting politicians means freedom i don't believe that and you know i don't frankly i don't think republicans believe that but they're, but they're pitching it. Then there's SB 494, the Predatory Housing Scam Act. Uh, this proposal was backed by out-of-state companies who wanted uh, uh, Florida lawmakers to let them charge perpetual limitless junk fees on tenants who can't come up with enough cash to pay a security deposit on their apartment. Uh, it also guts security deposit protections as a 
as an additional bonus. Then there's uh, Senate Bill 256. It's the Destroy Workers' Rights Act. Again, this list is from Progress Report uh, over on Substack, progressreport.substack.com. Uh, this new law makes it illegal for public sector unions to automatically deduct dues from members' paychecks. So it's essentially a new kind of uh, right to work for less law designed to gut unions. Because, you know, basically if unions have to come to their, to, to their uh, members every year and say, uh, you know, instead of having the uh, small slice of money deducted from every paycheck that goes to the union, which is typically how they work out these contracts, when a state forbids that, makes that illegal, intervenes, inserts itself between the employer and the employee, which is what these Republican laws do, the, 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 including Taft-Hartley back in 1947, the so-called right-to-work law. I call it right-to-work for less. Um, this makes it really difficult for unions. Unions typically, you know, when they're, when, when there's automatic payroll deductions, it seems kind of, you know, quiet and transparent and it's not a big deal. But when they're having to go to their members and say, hey, you know, <laughs> we need you to send us $200, please mail the check to this address, um, it becomes real problematic and people just stop paying and thus lose their union membership. And then when your union membership in Florida drops below 60%, and this may be nationwide, I'm not certain, but when it drops below 60%, certainly in Florida, then there's essentially an automatic vote uh, uh, that, that, you know, for the workers that put together by the state, an automatic vote to decide whether the union is even going to be certified by the state as a legal union. So this is called a, you know, a union decertification vote. So, you know, again, this is uh, something the Republican legislature passed, um, you know, in deference to right-wing billionaires, uh, you know, and their, and their companies. Then there's uh, Senate Bill 1718, the Terrorize Innocent Immigrants and Tank the Economy Act. Uh, this bill uh, initially made it a third-degree felony to drive or house an undocumented immigrant, including family. That produced quite an outcry. So now what, they do, now what they've done, the bill was signed last week by Governor DeSantis, it prohibits local funding of community identification programs for people who can't get a driver's license or a state level ID. Um, many cities were offering basically identification programs if you live and work in the city. Um, there's a whole bunch of reasons why you might wanna have some sort of, identi uh, some sort of identification card to open a checking account, uh, to be able to buy uh, liquor or get into a bar, um, to uh, you know, to participate in all kinds of things, you know, just general life, uh, you know, to to pick up your prescription at the drugstore. Unfortunately, uh, this bill, the the Terrorize Innocent Immigrants and Tank the Economy Act, Senate Bill 1718, uh, prohibits local funding of those programs. In other words, the state. This is again these these we are small government conservatives, right? <laughs> The state is coming in and saying, uh, "We're going to, we're going to, um, we're going to insert ourselves. This, this small government. We're going to insert ourselves between taxpayers and their state and their and their county or, or city governments, and we're going to tell the local, the small governments, what they can do and what they can't do." It also, by the way, violates the HIPAA law, the uh, Privacy and you know the Medical Privacy Act HIPAA, by requiring healthcare providers to ask their immigration status and to note that and to report it to the state government. Uh, the progress report notes, remember that undocumented Floridians pay more in taxes than Ron DeSantis's billionaire donors. I, I think if you, you'd have to, to make that absolutely accurate, you'd have to say income taxes, but close enough. Then there's Senate Bill 1438, the Beta Man Drag Panic Act. It uh, revokes the uh, liquor licenses of establishments or the license to do business of establishments that admit a child to drag shows. Right. But it's so broad. I mean, you know, uh, uh, pride shows across the state, gay pride shows, have been canceled, already been canceled, for fear of violating this vague, menacing law. And now it turns out that the sponsor of the bill, Randy Fine, his wife does sexually charged burlesque shows in front of children. 
In fact, his, uh, this year, his uh, Senator Fine's re-election campaign is sponsoring a, a burlesque show featuring his wife, a, you know, essentially a stripper show. Well, that, you know, maybe that'll be, be all illegal under this law, but I somehow doubt that the, that the uh, 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 DeSantis administration is going to enforce that. Okay. Uh, then there's the uh, HB 1521, the GOP Genital Obsession Act, which criminalizes transgender Floridians from using public bathrooms uh, that match their gender identity. This weird obscenity with the genitals and the, the creepy sexualization of public bathrooms by right-wingers is continuing. There's the uh, House Bill 1069, the Dead Name Kids Act. It expands the Don't Say Gay law. Uh, this new law bars teachers from referring to someone by their preferred pronoun or name. It prohibits instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity and creates a toxic environment by forcing school staff and students to misgender one another. The bill is designed to double down on the DeSantis censorship agenda that uh, the Progress Report notes that has already resulted in the banning of books the removal of say, safe space stickers from classroom windows, and the refusal to recognize LGBTQ History Month. Incredible. Another, we're going through the, the essentially fascist laws that the DeSantis administration has been pushing. Uh, there's Senate Bill 254, the Eradicate Transgender Kids Act. This one expands Florida's ban and restrictions on gender affirming care for minors and adds restrictions on gender affirming care for adults. It's incredibly mean. It gives state authorities the disturbing ability to strip custody from parents who, who support their transgender kids. Doctors are also under fire in this legislation. The bill threatens providers by promising to take away the medical licenses of medical professionals who provide gender affirming care and prosecute them as felons. The bill also prohibits Medicaid from covering gender affirming care. Uh, for transgender youth and adults, and further forbids other public funds, including those of a public university, a public hospital, or a city or county, from being used to provide any kind of benefits that might include gender-affirming care. The bill also allows the state to use gender-affirming care or the risk of such care for a child as a reason to give Florida family courts the power to set aside another state's custody determination. In other words, uh, you know, if somebody gets divorced and, and uh, one party gets custody of the child and the child wants, you know, is trans, that can be used to take that child away from that party and give the custody to the other partner who may be opposed to that child being trans. Expect more children committing suicide as a result of this. Then there's Senate Bill 266, the Right Wing Loser University Act. It bans funding for diversity, equity, and inclusion programs and restricts teaching about race and gender on college campuses. Uh, the legislation also restricts what can be taught in college classrooms, uh, Progress Reports notes, by instructing the Board of Governors to review classes for violations of the Stop Woke Act and to flag class content based on, quote, uh, based on theories that, that systemic racism, sexism, oppression, or privilege are inherent in the institutions of the United States and were created to maintain social, political, or economic inequalities. In other words, if you assert that, if you say that, yes, uh, you know, <laughs> we had slavery in this country, and we still have, you know, uh, uh, ra essentially institutional racism in many, many parts of this country, if you acknowledge that, then the funding for your college goes away. That's SB 266. Then there's SB 7050, the Help Ron, Ron Run for President Act. Uh, that law changes uh, Florida law. Right now, under Florida law, if the governor wants to run for president, he has to announce that he is going to resign, and he has to resign by uh, the day that he would be sworn in as president. Under, under this bill, he, can, he can, doesn't have to resign. It allows, uh, and, and, you know, it allows him to keep doing his job as governor, <laughs> right, while he's running for president, and uh, he doesn't have to resign. It also increases uh, regulations and fines on third-party re voter registration drives. 
So if the, uh, if the um, League of Women Voters or, uh, you know, uh, any other group, frankly, any other good government group wants to come in and, and try to register voters in the state of Florida, the, the risk of going to jail for doing that is radically increased under the Help Ron Run for President Act. It also allows politicians to disclose their campaign donations less frequently. Right now in Florida, politicians are required to can't disclose campaign donations every uh, month. This makes it quarterly so that they can, you know, take a longer period of time to hide their donations and, and things like that. So the Help Ron Run for President Act, one more piece of the fascist legislation that is being passed in Florida. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy.